we called home to check. Is it true, we asked? How can the pictures be real, we thought? All we wanted to do was go back home to be with our families and stand together with our people. I remember landing in the airport on 31st December, a night when the whole of Colombo is normally lit up for festivities, a time of music and laughter and revelry. But the town was empty and dark, the mood depressed and silent with sorrow. While we were thinking how we could help, Murali was quick to provide the inspiration. Murali is a guy who has been pulled from all sides during his career but he's always stood only alongside his teammates and countrymen. Without any hesitation, he was on the phone to his contacts, both local and foreign, and in a matter of days, along with the World Food Program, he had organized container loads of basic necessities of food, water, and clothing to be distributed to the affected areas and people. Amazingly, refusing to delegate the responsibility of distribution to the concerned authorities, he took it upon himself to accompany the convoys. It was my good fortune to be invited to join him. My wife and I, along with Mahela, Ruchira Pereira, our physio CJ Clark, and many other volunteers, drove alongside the aid convoys towards an experience that changed me as a person. We based ourselves in Polo Naro, just north of Dambulla, driving daily to visit tsunami-ravaged coastal towns like Trincomalee and Batiklo, as well as southern towns like Gol and Hambantota on later visits. We visited shelter camps run by the Army and the LTTE, and even some administered in partnership between them, two bitter warring factions brought together to help people in a time of need. In each camp, we saw the effects of the tragedy written upon the faces of the young and old, vacant and empty eyes filled with sorrow and longing for homes, for loved ones, and for livelihoods lost to the terrible waves. Yet for us, their cricketers, they managed to smile. In the Kinya camp, just south of Trincomalee, the first response of the people who had lost so much <clears throat> was to ask us if our families were okay. <coughs> they had heard that Sanat and Upul Chandana's mothers were injured and they inquired about their health. They did not exaggerate their own plight, nor did they wallow in it. Their concern was equal for all those around them. This was true in all the camps we visited. Through their devastation, shone the Sri Lankan spirit of indomitable resilience, compassion, generosity, and hospitality, and gentleness. This is the same spirit in which we play our cricket. In this, our darkest hour, a country stood together in support and love for each other, united and strong. I experienced all this and vowed to myself that never would I be tempted to abuse the privilege that these very people had afforded me. The honor and responsibility of representing them on the field, playing a game they loved and adored. The role the cricketers played in their personal capacities for post-tsunami relief and rebuilding was worthy of the trust the people of a nation had in them. Murali again stands out. His Sinigama project with his manager Kushil Gunasekara which I know the MCC has supported and still does with an ongoing funding of over 30,000 pounds a year, and which included the rebuilding of over 1,000 homes, was amazing. I was fortunate that during my life, I never experienced violence in Sri Lanka firsthand. There had been so many bomb explosions over the years, but I was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. In Colombo, apart from these occasional bombs, life was relatively normal. People had the luxury of being physically detached from the war. Children went to school, people went to work, and I played my cricket. In other parts of the country, though, people were putting their lives in harm's way every day, either in the defense of their motherland or just trying to survive the geographical circumstances that made them inhabit a war zone. For them, avoiding bullets, shells, mines, and grenades was imperative for survival. This was an experience I could not relate to. I had great sympathy and compassion for them, but 
I had no real experience from which I could draw parallels. That was until we toured Pakistan in 2009. We set off to play two tests in Karachi and Lahore. The first test played on a feather bed, passed without great incident. The second test was also meandering along with us piling up a big first innings when we departed for the ground on day three. Having been asked to leave early, instead of waiting for the Pakistan bus, we were anticipating a hard day of toil for the bowlers. At the back of the bus, the fast bowlers were loud in their complaints. I remember Tilan Tushara being particularly vocal, complaining that his back was near breaking point, and he joked, and I kid you not, that he wished a bomb would go off so we could all leave Lahore and go back home. Not 30 seconds had passed <laughs> when we heard what sounded like firecrackers going off. Suddenly a shout came from the front, get down, they are shooting at the bus. The reaction was immediate. Everyone died for cover and took shelter on the aisle or behind the seats. With very little space, we were lying on top of each other. Then the bullets started to hit. It was like rain on a tin roof. The bus was at a standstill, an easy target for the gunmen. As bullets started bursting through the bus, all we could do was lay still, stay quiet, hoping and pr praying to avoid death or injury. <clears throat> Suddenly, Mahela, who sits right at the back of the bus, shouts, saying he thinks he has been hit in the shin. I'm lying next to Tilan. He groans in pain as a bullet hits him in the back of his thigh. I turn my head to look at him. I feel something whiz past my ear, and a bullet thuds into the side of the seat the exact spot where my head was a second ago. I feel something hit my shoulder and it goes numb. I know I had been hit, but I was just relieved and praying I was not going to be hit in the head. Taranga Pranavitan on his debut tour is also next to me. He stands up, bullets flying all around him, shouting, I just got hit. As he holds his blood-soaked chest, he collapses into his seat, apparently unconscious. Now this is his debut tour, and I see him, and I think, oh my God, you were out first ball, run out in the next innings, and now you have been shot. <laughs> what a terrible, terrible first tour. It is, it is strange how clear your thinking is. I did not see my life flash by. There was no insane panic. There was absolute clarity and awareness of what was happening at that moment. 